Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of Pump and Dump. Where we have a discussion about Wizards products and what Wizards is doing. Coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. We're going to have a conversation today about the good old pump and dump that Wizards likes to do. This isn't like a rant, okay? I'm not here to complain about it. I'm here to explain how, why, and when it works. When Wizards does a good job pumping up a product, when they hit the spoiler season just right, when their R&D department has put together that perfect set of cards, kind of like how they did when they did Commander Legends, you know, when we saw this come out, we were pretty excited. I gotta be honest, I like this product. I also like the fact that they didn't print that many of the Commander Legends collector boxes, which just made it seem more collectible to me. So to me, that ticks off a lot of boxes. As a reserve list player, seeing things hard to get, a certain limited quantity, it just kind of builds me up. So Time Spiral Remastered right here. You notice it's just below. I gotta be honest, with Time Spiral Remastered, I did not buy it. I, I, I did videos saying don't buy it. Because it's a reprinted set. But then Wizards did a little bit of a chip shot surprise that even I didn't see coming. And that was to put in those time shifted foils that are worth so much money. And if they don't reprint the set, if they don't put more out around Christmas time, and there's none coming, kudos man. <laughs> Gotta give them a prop because that builds the demand. It builds the, the awesomeness, the FOMO but it also jacks up the price for those who still have it. So if you have a distributor who happens to have some and a store tries to reorder it, the distributor's like, oh, sorry, man, these are 350 bucks, which means the store's got to sell for like five, 600 bucks. You can see how that can become a problem. So Wizards won't go that deep, but they have a lot of fingers and a lot of pies. Think about Challenger decks. They've had dual decks from the vault. Guys, they've had a lot. Of Transform, remember all those sets they've had out? They flip and move through products as we as consumers desire it. If something doesn't sell well, they move on to another product, okay? They do. Uh, when you look back at fat packs, the old fat packs used to have storybooks in them, actual novels, with only one or two boosters and like a nice dice or a little card holder. It all changed, like they change it year after year. But then somewhere around 09, they get that nice conformity we know nowadays, kind of like the bundle, the fat pack, nine packs, 10 packs. They will pivot to make money. They will pump up products to make money. They are going to have misses like Kaldheim, which is just wallet fatigue, settling in. They, they misread the market, but maybe they short run it. Maybe they're going to print it only two printings and call it a day, which means those who held on to Kaldheim will get money later on because it's going to go up in value as a collectible because it was harder to get. The Moto Flip lands, beautiful lands, got to say, love them, and they're doing well but they're still considered very cheap, okay? Because they didn't make it basic land, they didn't make it fetchable. So Wizards, when they pump out their products, they have a lot of people behind the, the, the steering wheel. And everyone's trying to get a hand on it to get what they want in. I want a certain price point. I want a certain type of card. I want to hit a certain type of audience. I'm going to put Challenger decks. We're going to put Precon Commander decks out there. We, oh, we're going to put out an unset. Something silly and fun. Yes, absolutely. All these products hit the hand, and all of them come out. But not all of them are hits, at least not with everyone. And a lot of products you can see sitting on shelves for years tells you something. Sometimes Wizards gets it wrong. And when they get it wrong, they know they hit it wrong because either price point was too high, they, they pump out a product that isn't selling well, the distributors over-order it, and they go, ah, oh, we don't want any more. This happens a lot of the time, but not as often as it used to. Wizards is getting better and better at hitting the mark. When you think of chase cards inside of Time Spiral, when you think of the chase cards that you have found inside Commander Legends with the, with the Foil Jewel Lotus extended art, that is Wizards hitting the mark, getting ready, pumping out a particular product that hits the right set of people at the right price point. It would be an illusion to think that Wizards will not push these prices higher. Pump things up even more. We see a commander box here. Here, let's take this one. Let's take Theros. What's going to stop them from cutting this in half, doing just six packs in a smaller booster thing here, but charging $600 because they're all foil extended full art mythics? 
Nothing. Nothing is stopping them from doing that. Because we like the commander. We like the decks. We like collector boxes. We like challenger decks. They will keep doing it. And they will push the envelope every time to see what products they can get out and how much money they can squeeze out of us as consumers. When consumers reject a product wholly, when we say, no, we're not buying it, they will pivot away. Doesn't mean they won't come back to it later, but they were like, whoa, the distributors didn't want it. We didn't want it. Stores didn't want it. Nobody bought it. We got to move to a new product. The dual decks were an awesome, awesome subset where they had planeswalkers. They showed these little battle things. As soon as they went to like non-planeswalkers, they killed off their own product. They should have kept planeswalkers. They even built unique planeswalkers that only go in those decks would have been epic, but they didn't, they didn't stick with that. And that's, that's a shame because that could have been something. And Wizards makes those mistakes. And every time they burn that bridge, they pivot away, they bury the corpse of what that product was, and they move on to the next one. You ever wonder why spoiler season is set a certain way for products? It's to build the hype of the hype train so we can jump on in and move into that product going, yeah, we all want it! But we don't all want it. I didn't buy Kaldheim. I bought a little bit for patrons and stuff who wanted to order some boxes. We opened them on the channel. It was fun, but I myself did not buy it. Strixhaven I was going to skip, but a couple of the cards have caught me, and I bought some. Okay? But I chose. And choosing to buy that product is okay. I looked at the spoilers. I looked at the cards that interested me, and I said, this is a product, Strixhaven. I was wrong. This is a product I now want to buy and enjoy and draft and have some fun with. So I went ahead and got it. I have bought a couple of boxes for myself. Yeah, I kind of ate into it, but that's what happens. I chose to buy that particular product where I skipped Cal Time. I'm probably skipping Vampires and Werewolves of Innistrad. I'm probably going to skip them. Maybe a little bit for patrons who may want some or one or two box openings, but I'm probably not going to really buy into it. For those who've watched the channel for a while, you know D&D is good for me. I'm a big fan of Dungeons & Dragons. I played a long time as a kid. Wizards hit the nostalgia hammerhead. Bah! They made me bring up my band hammer because I just want to have a magical hammer with a Vorpal blade with a bag of holding and a fireball in my hand. D&D is going to be a big one for me. And when Wizards pumped that product out, when I saw that announced, I didn't need any any spoilers yet. I was hyped already. I've been talking about it since it, since it was announced. And I'm looking forward to what that product will bring later on. It is going to be very exciting. But that may not be for you. There might be another player saying, oh my god, D&D, really? That's going to be ridiculous. So all these products won't be for everyone. But Wizards has a lot of fingers in those pies. And they are trying to spread that wealth around to get a little bit in everything. When they make a specialty product, when they make a product for 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 20 bucks, they're hitting different subsets. $100 packs. Think about the VIP Double Masters. There are whales out there who loved opening it. I opened a little bit here on the channel. I got a couple of good packs. I had some fun. We gave away some of it. But guys, that was crazy. I myself will never buy products like that again. Because it is just too expensive for what your odds of getting it is. But there are other people who are going to say, You're crazy, Mox, man. That's the way to buy. The, the high roller, man. There's some good stuff in there. You're right. There is. But it may not be for you and it may not be for me. But it will be for someone. Wizards knows what they're doing. And I celebrate the fact that they make so many products now of ones I like and there's some I dislike. So I have to say, ah, I don't like that one, but that's okay for me and it's okay for you because we get to choose. I just will advise people not to fall into the FOMO of buying everything. Pick the products you need to buy. Wizards is going to dump products out every year. They're going to pump them up to get you excited and then they're going to dump them onto the market and they just move on to the next product. So... Make sure when you're buying a product, it's a product you care about and want to have. Not something you feel pressured into buying because some friends bought it. It's okay to skip it once in a while and just buy a couple of the singles off the store shelf. Right, guys? Thanks a lot for tuning in. This is MTG Mox, man. Always leave your comments, questions, concerns at the bottom because it's going to be an exciting year. And we got a ways to go still. I, I can't wait. we got Strixhaven coming out. Then we got Modern Masters. we got D&D. Man, I think it's D&D and then Modern Masters. And then who knows whatever surprise sets they're going to put in there that they don't even announce. There'll be some. I guarantee it. All right, man. Looking forward to talking to you guys soon. Have a great one. This is MTG Mox, man. I'm going to click things off.
Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. You guys rock. My patrons are here. That's right, we got Michael P. We got the Walsh man. We got Charles. We got David. We got James P. We got Michael R. We got Stephanos. We got Adam. You guys rocking it, man. Thanks, everyone. How many times can I mess up in one day? Well, let me get this straight, Mox man. This is take number 32. You're not even trying right now because what's the point? You're just going to make a mistake again. So now you record this as an outtake and let people enjoy it and say, <laughs> I know, right? Get it right. Get it right. Do it. Get it right.